Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us here uh, today in Phnom Penh. Uh, as you know, the President has had uh, some bilats uh, this morning and some other meetings that he's uh, participating in. I have Ben Rhodes, uh, Deputy National Security Advisor for Strategic Communications, who can uh, give you a, an overview of the President's day and also uh, can answer questions about the meetings, about the trip, and other matters. I'm uh, here uh, to take questions on non-foreign policy-related issues, uh, if you have any. And with that, I'll turn it over to Ben. Daniel, before you begin, there's a breaking story about the Secretary of State going to Israel. Can you we'll, we'll, address, that? we'll address that, Mark. I'll we'll address that, that uh, right ahead. Um, OK, well, uh, first of all, I'll just give a quick update. Uh, of the President's meetings this morning, and then an update on the situation in Gaza. Um, the first meeting the President had this morning was with the uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership countries that are in attendance here at the summit. Uh, the countries re reviewed the progress that has been made in negotiations over the course of the last year. Uh, they also discussed the countries that have come into the TPP. Canada and Mexico have joined. Uh, Japan and Thailand have expressed an interest in joining. Uh, they're committed to getting uh, those negotiations concluded with an aim to doing so next year uh, so that they can complete that trade agreement. Uh, then the President, as you saw, met with Prime Minister Noda uh, of Japan. Uh, they reviewed uh, the bilateral security uh, cooperation that we do through our alliance. They discussed uh, regional issues, including maritime security, and some of the territorial disputes associated with that, uh, and they ad addressed uh, Japan uh, and its uh, aspirations uh, to join the TPP uh, and agree to continue uh, negotiations towards an achievement of that goal, uh, which we believe would uh, strengthen the TPP and be good for both Japan and the United States. Uh, then the President met with uh, Premier Wen Zhoubao of China. This was the last meeting uh, that the two leaders will have, given Wen Zhoubao's uh, moving out of that role next year. Um, they discussed uh, the importance of the U.S. and China consistently maintaining our cooperation on a bilateral, regional, and global level. They discussed security issues, including Iran. Uh, they discussed economic issues, including our, our commitment to strengthen the rules of the road in the global economy. Uh, and they discussed regional stability, um, reaffirming that China is a part of uh, our engagement here in this important region, a critical part of that engagement, uh, and our interest, uh, again, in resolving territorial disputes uh, and maritime disputes consistent with international rules of the road. Um, a couple of things on, on Gaza. Uh, last night we uh, read out to you the uh, President, after leaving the dinner, uh, called uh, President Mercy of Egypt uh, and then Prime Minister Netanyahu of uh, Israel. Um, he, uh, again, reaffirmed uh, our um, belief that uh, it's important for there to be a de-escalation uh, in the region, uh, one that, again, brings an end to rocket fire uh, into Israeli cities. And uh, then later that night, uh, the President spoke to President Mercy again uh, to discuss Egypt's constructive role in seeking to bring about uh, a de-escalation in the region. Um, <clears throat> then uh, again to Mark's question, uh, this morning Secretary Clinton and the President spoke uh, again about the situation in Gaza and the calls that he'd done. Uh, and they agreed that it makes sense for the Secretary to travel to the region. So Secretary Clinton will depart today, uh, and she'll travel to Jerusalem, Ramallah, and Cairo, uh, leaving from uh, Phnom Penh. She'll meet with regional leaders, uh, beginning with our Israeli partners, to consult on the situation in Gaza. Uh, her visits will build on the engagement uh, that we've undertaken over the last several days, including the engagement by President Obama and Secretary Clinton with leaders in the region uh, to support a de-escalation of the violence and a durable outcome that ends the rocket attacks on Israeli cities and restores a broader calm in the region. Uh, again, as President Obama noted in his conversation with President Mercy, uh, we commend Egypt's efforts to de-escalate the situation and are hopeful that they will be successful. Uh, on her trip, uh, Secretary Clinton will emphasize uh, the United States' interest in a peaceful outcome that protects and enhances Israel's security and regional stability, an outcome that can lead to improved condition conditions for the civilian residents of Gaza, and they can reopen the path to fulfill the aspirations of Palestinians and Israelis uh, for two states living side by side in peace and security. And of course, she will continue to express our concern about the loss of civilian life uh, on both sides. 
And with that, I'll take your questions. Jim. You've always you've said that the, the precipitating uh, incidents in this is a rocket fire coming from Gaza. What is it that Secretary Clinton can take to to the region? What can it what can she offer to Hamas to provide incentives to to make them stop uh, doing this? And then could you also talk in more detail about any discussions on East China Sea disputes and South China Sea disputes and how to resolve? Them? Well, sure. On your uh, first question, uh, again, the reason there's a conflict uh, in Gaza. Uh, is because of the rocket fire that's been launched at Israeli civilians indiscriminately uh, for, for many months now. Uh, and any solution to this uh, challenge has to include an end uh, to that uh, rocket fire. Uh, at the same time, I think we all agree that the best way to solve this uh, is through diplomacy, uh, so that you have a peaceful settlement that ends that rocket fire and allows for a broader calm uh, in the region. So what we've been doing, again, is working with uh, our Israeli partners uh, to reinforce uh, our close cooperation on security matters and our uh, support for their right to defend themselves, but also to work with countries like Egypt that have uh, relationships with the Palestinians um, so that they may use that influence in those relationships, uh, again, to encourage a de-escalation. Uh, so we want to broaden those discussions uh, as we move forward with Secretary Clinton going to the region uh, so that, uh, again, we can build on the constructive role that Egypt is playing. Uh, and send a clear message that uh, it's in nobody's interest to see uh, an escalation of the military conflict. Um, so again, she'll be speaking to Israelis, uh, and her first stop will be uh, in Israel, where she'll meet with Prime Minister Netanyahu, uh, again, to reinforce our close cooperation. Then she'll be meeting with Palestinians in Ramallah, and she'll be meeting with Egyptian leaders uh, in Cairo. Uh, and again, the goal throughout that trip is for everybody to use uh, their influence uh, and their voices uh, to encourage a peaceful outcome uh, rather than uh, an escalation. Uh, but again, our bottom line is that peaceful outcome has to include an end to rocket fire that threatens Israel. Uh, with respect to the East China Sea, um, you know, our view is that uh, there needs to be a lowering of tension around these territorial disputes. Um, there's no reason uh, to risk any potential escalation, uh, particularly when you have uh, two of the world's largest economies, China and Japan, associated with uh, some of those disputes. Uh, so again, I think President Obama's message is uh, there needs to be a, a re reduction of the tensions in, in the East China Sea uh, and a, a process uh, going forward more broadly uh, to ensure that these types of disputes don't risk escalation. Does it affect that, that tension, though, if there are U.S., uh, if the U.S. is participating in Japan military exercises? Well, it helps, we believe, the regional security and regional stability to have the United States uh, as a cornerstone of our engagement in the region maintain its close alliance with Japan. You know, we believe that the alliance we have and the military cooperation we have with Japan has been an anchor of stability in Asia for decades. Uh, and it's helped, by the way, create the context that has allowed for broader prosperity and the peaceful rise of China. Uh, so uh, we believe our co cooperation with Japan is essential to Japan's security. Um, but it is also constructive uh, in ensuring that this part of the world uh, maintain, maintains the, the type of stability that has allowed it to have such economic growth. Okay. Chuck? Well, who is she meeting with in Ramallah? Is she just meeting with uh, Abbas and members of Fatah, or is she meeting with some member of Hamas? I'll, you know, I'll allow the State Department to speak to the specifics of her schedule beyond her first meetings with Prime Minister Netanyahu. Uh, I, I can assure you that she'll be meeting with the Palestinian Authority. The United States does not engage directly with Hamas. Uh, Hamas uh, has not met the conditions that we've set for many years to renounce terrorism, to recognize Israel's right to exist, and to abide by pre-existing agreements. Uh, so we do not engage directly with Hamas. Look, the Palestinian Authority, uh, again, uh, is uh, the, uh, the leadership uh, of, the, of the Palestinians. President, President Abbas is the elected leader uh, of the Palestinians. So they are a critical voice in this, uh, in these matters, uh, both as it relates to what's happening in Gaza uh, and our efforts going forward uh, to improve the situation in Gaza, uh, but also in terms of our broader efforts to pursue uh, peace between Israelis and Palestinians. So we believe that President Abbas and the Palestinian Authority are critical partners in our efforts in the region, uh, and it's important for us to reaffirm that with her visit. Is this, 
essentially an attempt to send the message that U.S. is trying to play the role of mediator here? What we've been doing, again, is uh, working with a, a number of countries um, to play the role in supporting a, a de-escalation. So w her trip is building on the discussions that we've had over the course of the last several days, again, with President Mercy of Egypt, uh, with uh, Prime Minister Erdogan of Turkey. Uh, the Secretary has been in touch with Ban Ki-moon, uh, who's also traveling uh, to the region, uh, as well as a number of her counterparts. Uh, so uh, this will extend those consultations uh, and what we hope for is enough support in the region and internationally uh, for a de-escalation, uh, for an end to rocket fire uh, that can provide for calm uh, and avoid, you know, an escalation of a very uh, difficult challenge in Gaza. She's leaving from uh, Phnom Penh, so she's leaving here later today. I don't have an exact time, um, but uh, she'll be leaving from the summit. And again. The, the President and Secretary Clinton have been talking about the situation throughout the trip. Um, they spoke about it last night. Uh, then after the President's calls late last night, he met with Secretary Clinton this morning uh, and was able to update her on his calls and to discuss the way forward. Uh, and then throughout the day at the summit site, uh, the two of them were in discussions uh, along with Tom Donald, the National Security Advisor, who's also been talking to his counterparts. Uh, and. Uh, again, um, we believe that the best way to advance the discussions we've had with leaders in the region is for Secretary Clinton uh, to, to, to take this trip, uh, again, beginning with our close partner, Israel. President, what leverage does she bring? What leverage does the U.S. have other than trying to gather support from other players? There have been a lot of non-negotiable demands from Hamas. Look, it's, 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 it's not a matter of leverage. It's a matter of what's in everybody's best interest. It is not in the interest of the Palestinians and the people of Gaza for there to be an escalation of this conflict. Uh, that would bring with it a, a huge cost. Uh, as the President said the other day, uh, we believe Israel has right to defend itself. Uh, Israel will make decisions about its own security. Uh, at the same time, if we can achieve the goal uh, of an end to rocket fire peacefully, that's clearly preferable. And that's a view that's shared uh, by Israelis and by leaders in the region. So I think what's at stake here um, is whether or not we can come together uh, and, again, see uh, leaders take decisions uh, to support a de-escalation uh, that ultimately can avert uh, a greater loss of life uh, from what we've seen in the previous several days. Ben, if you were able to characterize how effective Mercy has been so far, how would you characterize the way he's handled this situation? You know, we, the, the President and the Secretary, um, believe that the Egyptians have been quite constructive in the con conversations we've had with them, um, that uh, they've expressed a sincere commitment uh, to support a, a, a de-escalation here. Um, what's important now is to, again, continue uh, to pursue that course, uh, to use the influence that they have over the situation to encourage that course. Uh, so to date, uh, we're encouraged by uh, the cooperation and the consultation we've had with the Egyptian leadership. We want to see that, uh, again, support uh, a process that can uh, de-escalate the situation. Uh, but again, th the bottom line still remains uh, that Hamas has to stop this rocket fire. So ultimately, they're the ones uh, who are going to have to be a part of uh, a, a solution that ends the type of terror that Israeli citizens have faced uh, over so many months uh, with this barrage of rockets coming into Israeli territory. I, you know, I wouldn't want to draw comparisons at this point. Um, you know, obviously this has been a conflict that has been going on for decades. Uh, Egypt has been a critical part of our effort uh, to manage that conflict and pursue peace. Uh, that was the case under President Mubarak. Continues to be the case under President Mercy, who has upheld uh, the peace treaty with Israel. Uh, what we've seen is, uh, again, our engagement has been focused on uh, practical and constructive cooperation uh, that can reduce uh, tensions. Uh, but Ultimately, again, it's going to have to be uh, Hamas uh, within Gaza that takes the step uh, of, again, not pursuing uh, rocket fire in Israeli territory. But we believe that Egypt should, can and should be a partner uh, in seeking to bring about that outcome. Well, I'd say a couple of things. Um, first of all, uh, 
in the call last night with President Mercy, President Obama did express condolences for what was an awful uh, train wreck that took the lives of uh, dozens of people, including many children. Um, and President Mercy is, of course, focused on that. Uh, I think as it relates to the suffering of the people in Gaza, though, um, our message to everybody, the Egyptians, the Palestinians, uh, other uh, regional and international uh, partners, uh, is that the suffering uh, that they are facing uh, will only increase if this conflict increases. Uh, so therefore, uh, those who are, have the best interests of the people of Gaza at heart uh, will want to see an end to this conflict and a de-escalation uh, of this conflict. Uh, you know, as the President said the other day, uh, any escalation of the military conflict would only bring about greater suffering and loss of life on both the Israeli and Palestinian side. Uh, so that should be the basis for people uh, to come together and avoid that outcome. Uh, and again, the only way you're going to have that outcome is if the precipitating factor of this conflict, the rocket fire, comes to an end. You keep using the phrase, uh, de-escalate the situation. Are you avoiding using the, the word ceasefire? No, I, I mean, I, I, there are many ways that you can achieve the, the goal of a de-escalation. Um, again, what our bottom line is, uh, is an end to rocket fire. We're open to uh, any number of ideas for achieving that goal. We've discussed uh, any number of ideas uh, for accomplishing that goal. Um, but it's going to have to begin with a reduction of tensions um, and you know, space created for the situation to calm. Um, so we'll be discussing going forward, as we have been over the last several days, what are the various ways in which we can accomplish that goal? Why is that? Um, second, on TPP, the Prime Minister today, he wasn't able to announce an official decision um, by Japan to join the negotiations. Were you hoping for that official decision today, and are you disappointed? And last, can you give me a sense of how much of the conversation revolved around the Senkaku Islands, and what was the President's message to Prime Minister Moda? On the Senkakus? Um, well, first of all, in the time, I, I, I couldn't, um, I'm not aware of exactly how long it was. Um, obviously, this was on the margins of a summit, so you're not allowed to, you're not able to have a kind of open-ended discussion. Um, but my understanding is that it was a, a good and friendly discussion between the two leaders. Um, with respect to the TPP, we did not have an expectation that there would be some final agreement today. Um, there are uh, still a number of issues um, at play. Um, you know, as I said, we very much welcome Japan's interest in the TPP. We think they could contribute a lot uh, to the agreement, and I think we want to continue um, continue those negotiations going forward. You know, there are issues again that you know we're interested in, like autos, uh, where we want to make sure that. Um, American automakers have access to Japanese markets and uh, have a level playing field both here in the United States and in Japan. Uh, we know that there are, uh, there are issues that are of interest to the, on, to the Japanese as well. So we're going to continue our discussions around those issues uh, with the goal uh, very much being uh, Japan coming into the TPP and we commend Prime Minister Noda's leadership uh, in supporting that outcome. Uh, with respect to the Sakakus, again, uh, it came up. Um, it wasn't uh, discussed extensively. Um, our message was uh, that we, uh, again, support our, our close friend and ally, Japan, and we believe, however, the best way uh, to deal with the situation going forward is to avoid uh, a potential escalation, um, a, a potential you know, misunderstanding that could lead to an escalation. Uh, so I think it's in the interest of China, Japan, the United States, and the region uh, to see a reduction of tensions around that issue as well. Well, I think they were just, they were reviewing, given that this was uh, Premier Wen's last meeting with the President, they were reviewing a number of the issues that they've worked on together over the last four years. One of them is Iran sanctions. Um, and so it wasn't so much uh, a discussion about um, specific uh, issues as much as it was a reiteration of the fact that uh, we have had cooperation from the Chinese on issues like Iran sanctions. We need to maintain that cooperation going forward. Um, particularly in our sanctions regime, because we share the goal of uh, diplomatic resolution uh, to the Iranian nuclear issue. Um, so that's, uh, that's the nature of that discussion. Laura? Um, thank you. Um, on the South China Sea issue, it looks like what's happening is that um, 
you know, China is saying that there's been an agreement not to, quote, internationalize the issue. Presumably that means deal with it in a forum like the East Asia Summit. Um, Philippines and other countries are saying, no, we don't. We haven't, don't have an agreement along those lines. What is the U.S. understanding of the state of play on this issue? And is this something that President Obama plans to, has already brought up or plans to bring up? I think what we've seen um, for, for a period of time now is uh, a belief by uh, the United States uh, that there needs to be a process to discuss issues associated with maritime security in the South China Sea, uh, and that the forums like uh, the East Asia Summit are important for that, um, because uh, these need to be discussed in a multilateral context uh, so that we can reaffirm the principles uh, of maritime security that can guide a resolution to something like the South China Sea. Uh, so for instance, the U.S. Uh, believes that uh, any solution has to be consistent with international law, it has to preserve the free flow of commerce that is important, uh, not just uh, to the countries in this region, but to the world. The U.S. is not a claimant in the South China Sea, uh, but we have significant interest there, uh, given its role in the global economy. Uh, we also want to see continued momentum on a diplomatic process. Uh, so for instance, ASEAN has been talking to the China about a code of conduct uh, that could help avoid uh, misunderstandings, uh, escalations uh, within the South China Sea. We believe that's the type of diplomatic effort that uh, needs to m maintain momentum going forward. So the President will raise this, certainly, in the East Asia Summit. Uh, we expect other leaders to raise it at the East Asia Summit as well. And that's exactly why we feel like it's so important to engage uh, in international architecture like this in this region. Uh, because as all these countries grow, uh, as there are issues that need to be resolved associated with the rapid growth of these countries, you need to have forums where you can come together to address them. So we put the issue of maritime security uh, on the agenda last year along with uh, many other countries, uh, and we expect that to be a sustained process with ASEAN, uh, with uh, China, uh, and through the EAS. Um, and what that can do is create the context for a resolution uh, through diplomacy. Uh, so I expect we'll raise it here. Um, I expect other countries will. Uh, and we believe that's a very positive and constructive step going forward. So what's the current state of play right now in terms of, um, my understanding is that Cambodia as the host has some control over what is and isn't dealt with at the summit. And could you just explain how that all works? Well, uh, first of all, I think the current state of play more broadly is that last year you saw a lot of countries come forward, um, the vast majority of countries in this region, uh, and address maritime security in the South China Sea at the EAS. Since then, that's created, uh, again, space for diplomatic efforts, um, like uh, a negotiation of a code of conduct uh, and a set of other discussions. Uh, here in uh, Cambodia, uh, the Cambodians, of course, have uh, you know, a degree of say over um, uh, the agenda and what, uh, what the product of the summit is. But at the same time, nations can bring to the table whatever they want. Um, and we very much expect that nations will bring to the table uh, maritime security uh, and the South China Sea. Uh, and with ASEAN, uh, we discussed uh, maritime security as well. And there's a significant interest in ASEAN uh, to see uh, maritime security stay on the agenda uh, in these forums going forward. Uh, so uh, it's certainly going to be the case that it's on the agenda here. Uh, it's certainly going to be the case that uh, we're going to have a number of partners uh, who are committed, uh, again, to seeing that there's a diplomatic process for resolving these conflicts uh, consistent with international rules of the road, uh, rather than leaving it to uh, bilateral discussions between individual nations. We, we think that's not the way to resolve the issues in South China Sea. We believe that these need to be done uh, consistent with international law uh, and uh, discussed in multilateral fora. Ben, uh, it's been observed this week that, that at, right as the president and the administration is trying to show again that it's, it's, it's interested in pivoting to Asia, that events in the Middle East, again, have you know, sort of raised its head and sort of in some ways overshadowed or at least kept a part of the message here. Uh, does that raise any, can you comment on whether that raises any um, uh, you know, risk about sort of so publicly saying we're, we're, we're sort of pivoting to this direction? Is it hard to sort of focus, leave the focus in one or are you, can you do both? I mean, yeah, I mean, at, at, at the risk of uh, having a double metaphor with a pivot, um, we believe that the United States can walk and chew gum at the same time. Um, and I, th I think you saw evidence of that the last few days, where you had a truly historic visit by the President of the United States to Burma, 
uh, and a clear indication from both the government and people of that country that they want to move in a democratic direction and they want a deeper relationship with us, uh, which we believe can be uh, a tremendous step forward, uh, both for the advance of democracy, but also for uh, a very important relationship that the United States could have uh, with Burma going forward. Uh, so that uh, is a significant uh, thing that we'll take away from this trip, even as throughout the last several days, the President, the Secretary, uh, Tom Donilon, uh, were in touch with counterparts on the situation in Gaza. Um, you know, the pivot in many respects reflects not just uh, the time that we're spending here, uh, which is significant, but it's also resource allocation. Uh, and so much of our resources the last 10 years have been in Iraq, principally, uh, and then Afghanistan. Uh, and so uh, as those resources um, are dramatically reduced, uh, that not only creates time and space for the President and other senior officials, uh, it allows for us to do things like uh, prioritize our uh, security uh, presence in this region, prioritize our economic engagement uh, in this region, uh, and prioritize uh, our support for democracy and human rights uh, in this region, which was such an important part uh, of this trip as well. So uh, we'll continue uh, to move forward with our pivot, uh, even as we'll manage uh, the inevit inevitable crises and challenges that will come up in other, other regions. Jessica. Um, back to Israel and Gaza. A couple questions. If you mentioned it, I missed it. With whom is she meeting in Egypt? What role are you looking for Turkey to play? It sounds like you're asking them to play a more involved role, and why isn't she meeting there as well? And um, more broadly speaking, are you asking Israel, what does the end game look like? Have you encouraged them to think about it? And can you describe to us what a ramp down would look like for them? Now, well, first of all, I, I just want to leave it to the State Department to fill in the details of her schedule. We obviously just um, took the decision to pursue uh, this trip as uh, coming out of the engagements that the President and Secretary have had over the course of the last several days. Uh, we know she'll meet with Prime Minister Netanyahu in Israel. Uh, you know, we know she'll meet with the Palestinian Authority leadership, uh, presumably in Ramallah. Uh, and then in, in Cairo, uh, she'll meet with uh, a range of Egyptian leaders. Uh, they'll have updates on, on her schedule. Uh, I think with respect to Turkey, uh, we do believe that they are another country like Egypt that has influence um, with Hamas, with the Palestinians. The President has spoken to Prime Minister Erdogan. One of the people that uh, Secretary Clinton has been in touch with the last several days is Foreign Minister Davutoglu of Turkey. Uh, so she'll continue to be in touch with the Turks. Uh, and they too are part of uh, this effort, uh, an international effort, uh, to encourage a de-escalation. Uh, in terms of what that would look like, uh, again, our belief is in the short term uh, that has to involve an end to rocket fire and also a restoration of calm uh, within Gaza. Um, and that's necessary to create space to have a broader discussion about um, the fundamental issues at, uh, at stake. Um, ultimately, what we want to achieve uh, is uh, two states living side by side in peace and security. Um, and that is going to be much harder to achieve uh, if you're going to have conflicts like what we've seen in Gaza, uh, which make it that much more difficult to pursue what is already an incredibly difficult challenge. Uh, so we need to walk through the door here of uh, restoring calm to the region uh, and then address uh, some of the underlying challenges, um, both within Gaza, uh, where of course we've uh, worked to support, uh, uh, you know, progress in the humanitarian situation there, uh, as well as an end to uh, terror and rocket fire, uh, but then also more generally uh, getting back on a track towards, um, uh, uh, you know, the, the peace that we've been seeking for so many years. Matt? Yeah, Ben, are, uh, um, is uh, the administration specifically asking Prime Minister Netanyahu to hold off on any, any ground invasion while all these efforts are, are underway, while the diplomatic initiative begins? Um, you know, as we've said, uh, we think Israel has the right to defend itself. Um, we think that uh, Israel will make its own decisions about the military operations and decisions that it un undertakes. However, at the same time, we believe that uh, Israelis, um, like the United States, like other countries, uh, would prefer to see uh, their interests met uh, diplomatically and peacefully. Uh, you know, as the President said the other day, uh, an Israeli operation of that nature uh, would bring with a great cost to Palestinians in Gaza, but also to Israelis, because um, inevitably it would involve uh, Israeli casualties. Uh, so uh, we, again, want to support uh, the goals that Israel has. We share the goals that Israel has. Uh, and we and the Israelis both believe uh, that if you can achieve those goals peacefully, uh, that's preferable. But ultimately, they're going to have to make their own decisions about what they need to do to defend themselves. And we believe that they have every right uh, to defend their citizens from the threat uh, of these rockets coming in. 
Uh, and in, in addition to that, as they do, uh, you know, we're going to continue uh, to provide them with the type of support that we have uh, with the Iron Dome system, which has been quite effective uh, in protecting Israeli citizens from incoming rocket fire. Could you be more specific about whether the president has asked them to hold off on an invasion? No, we, you know, the president has been very clear that um, you know, Israel is going to make its own security decisions. Um, again, uh, that doesn't change the basic fact that uh, it's just common sense uh, that if you can achieve those goals diplomatically, uh, that would be in everybody's interest. But uh, again, our bottom line from the beginning has been that we understand that Israel has the right to defend itself, uh, and ultimately uh, they're going to make their decisions about how to do that. Uh, but if you step back and if you look at what's in the best interest of the Palestinian people, the Israeli people, and the region, uh, it's a restoration of calm uh, and not an escalation of the, of the conflict. We have just time for one or two more. Yeah. Yes. Uh, one follow-up question about Senkaku. Is my understanding correct that the President Obama raised this issue in a discussion with Japanese reader and Chinese reader? And secondly, could you tell us the, what was the reaction of the Chinese Premier Wen Jiang? The reaction of uh, Premier Wen on the Senkakus? Um, I'm not, aw I, I, I'm not aware that that issue came up in the meeting uh, with Premier Wen. Uh, I think that the President and Premier Wen had a uh, broader discussion about uh, maritime security and, and the need to resolve uh, disputes involved with maritime security uh, peacefully. Um, with uh, Prime Minister Noda, um, I'm not aware of who raised the issue. Uh, but this is something we've been talking to uh, you know, our Japanese allies uh, about for some time now. Again, our baseline is uh, we, of course, uh, are fully committed to Japan and its security. Uh, that's the cornerstone of our alliance. Um, we just, uh, again, believe that uh, it's in Japan's interest, it's in China's interest, it's in the world's interest uh, that the second and third largest economies in the world uh, are able to reduce tensions around this issue. Uh, so we ultimately think that, uh, again, that's a good outcome for, uh, for Japan. Do you think, um, in light of the crisis, that it's possible that Secretary Clinton might stay on longer, that the President might want her to, to um, change her time? You know, I, I've not heard any discussion of, uh, of Secretary Clinton staying on longer. I think that, um, uh, obviously, right now we're dealing with an urgent challenge, um, you know, with a window where we're trying to affect uh, the situation uh, in our discussions with countries in the region, and she's, of course, been an important part of that. Um, you know, I, I think, stepping back, what you saw on this trip was a recognition of the fact that this is uh, the last trip that she'll be on with the president. Um, and uh, I was talking to him earlier today uh, about uh, you know, the, the emotion around that, the discussions around that. Um, and you obviously saw his comments uh, in Rangoon. Um, and you know, he was intent, for instance, on bringing her down the front steps of Air Force One when they made the historic landing there. He also said that on the flight back from uh, Rangoon uh, to Cambodia. Uh, they spent basically the entire flight uh, alone uh, in his uh, personal office on Air Force One, um, just reminiscing about uh, the last uh, four years. But as the President said, it wasn't just the last four years. Uh, they've been through a lot together um, over the last five or six years. Uh, and in fact, um, you know, unique among people, uh, they've been at this, uh, working as hard as they can um, for five or six years now. And you know, I think what the President uh, expresses and, uh, uh, and what he believes is not only has she done a great job as Secretary of State, um, but they've really come to become not just partners but close friends. Um, and it's a friendship that he values very much and that he'll want to continue uh, going forward. Uh, but right now there's urgent uh, business to be done and um, you know, as they were rem reminiscing they were also talking about uh, the situation in Gaza and the international challenges that remain. Uh, so, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be in, I'm sure, very close touch with her uh, as she moves on to the, the Middle East in the coming days. This is the last one. Will there one more? Just. Can I just get a sense where you feel this stands? Are you guys getting any traction from Egypt on what the parameters for a ceasefire would be? We've been, again, what we think is that the Egyptians um, are sincere in their belief that it'll be, it'd be the best outcome. Uh, for there to be a de-escalation. You know, we have had discussions with them about um, the nature uh, of, of a de-escalation, what, what the ideas are that could advance that goal. 
We've also been talking to the Israelis, obviously, uh, at every step of the way, uh, so that we're fully coordinated with them. Many other uh, regional players have been involved. The UN Secretary General is going there tomorrow. So there are a number of ideas uh, that are at play. Um, you know, I'm not going to get into the details of them. I think, you know, if you step back, it, it's not that complicated. I mean, uh, you know, there needs to be, in, in the first instance, um, an end to the rocket fire and a restoration of calm. Uh, that can create space, uh, again, for a range of discussions um, that address uh, issues associated with the Israeli-Palestinian uh, uh, conflict. Uh, so, you know, what, you know, what is encouraging is uh, we believe that leaders understand what the best outcome would be here. However, uh, you can only achieve that goal uh, if Hamas takes action uh, to stop what, what they've been doing. Uh, so even if you have uh, support from these regional leaders, uh, ultimately uh, that's going to have to have an effect uh, on the ground on Hamas uh, because they're the ones uh, who precipitated this conflict with their uh, continued rocket fire in Israel. Hey, ben, explain it. Are you sending her, is she going because talks are stuck, or is she going because you think you're close? Okay. Well, she's going because we've been in discussions with these leaders, uh, and we, we want to carry those forward. Uh, and obviously, the center of gravity for those discussions is in the region. Uh, and the President's going to do a lot of work on the phone. Uh, you know, he was on the phone uh, until 2.30 in the morning last night. Um, you, know, he's, he, you know, he left dinner and basically uh, dealt with this for, for several hours. And so he'll continue to reach out to his counterparts. Um, but she is going to go out there uh, to be in the region to have direct face-to-face -face discussions with those leaders. Um, you know, I don't want to predict exactly what the outcome of those discussions will be. We all know how difficult this situation is. We all know uh, how charged uh, the issue of uh, Gaza is. Uh, we've seen conflict there in the past. Um, so this is a difficult challenge. But uh, again, it's worth uh, the effort of, of leaders in the United States, in the region, and internationally. Uh, to try to bring about the preferred outcome here, uh, which is uh, a, a peaceful de-escalation. Thanks, everybody. We, we, we have, we're going to miss the plane, guys. What do they do really at this point? It's really all about Gaza. Abbas has no power with Hamas in the Gaza Strip. So what can they Look, do? Look, obviously, the, the Palestinian Authority, um, as you know, elected leaders of the Palestinian people, uh, need to be a part of this discussion, just broadly, specifically in Gaza. Uh, they're going to need to be a part of the solution in the long term uh, in terms of the goals that we all share in improving the humanitarian situation there, uh, having greater opportunity for the people there, and having an end to terrorism there. Uh, so uh, we believe that it's very important that the Palestinian Authority uh, continue to be a part of these discussions. Uh, they have leg legitimacy to be a part of these discussions, uh, and they're clearly going to play a role in the future of the Palestinian people, Thanks in a leading much. role. Yep. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it.